Have you ever looked around and thought to yourself, why does everyone seem to have acne now? More specifically, why is it that so many women in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and older seem to have acne? Comment below if you were born before the year, I don't know, 1980. Do you remember your friend's mothers having acne growing up? Was it a thing? I think many people are starting to wake up to the fact that acne in adult women is a lot more common than it probably ever was. Why is that? Adult acne, especially in women, is one of the most common common reasons why patients come to a dermatologist in the first place. In today's video, we're going to talk about why acne in adults, specifically women, seems to be a lot more common than it was in the past. We're going to touch on the science behind why that might be, including hormones, diet, our overall lifestyle, and certain environmental exposures. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have some understanding of some of the key driving factors that may be responsible here. Let's just start by clarifying what I mean by adult acne. Acne is a condition where you have inflammation around the pores excessive oil production, and you have clogging of the pores. Adult acne basically refers to acne that persists beyond the teenage years, or in some cases, acne that begins for the first time in your 20s, in your 30s, as an adult. In women specifically, we tend to see acne that is a lot more inflammatory and a lot more persistent and stubborn and resistant to certain treatments, like isotretinoin. The acne tends to be concentrated on the lower face, like the jaw area, the chin around the mouth. Oftentimes, people label this as hormonal acne. But if you know anything about acne, all acne is hormonal, meaning hormones drive the excessive oil production in all types of acne, including acne that babies get. Furthermore, adult women whose acne is in association with a true hormonal disorder, those women, their acne doesn't even exclusively show up on the lower face. But for whatever reason, adult acne in women tends to localize in this area. Studies show that acne is actually quite common in adults, but especially in women, like more so than men, particularly between the ages of 20 and 40. Acne isn't just a skin surface condition. It goes beyond the skin. It can really impact someone's overall quality of life, their self-esteem, their confidence, even their career. There are some studies that suggest that women who deal with acne experience discrimination in the workplace, perhaps due to attitudes around acne as like a personal failure or something that young immature people, aka teenagers have and that adults should mature out of or grow out of. So maybe you're not responsible. I don't know. I honestly don't know what goes through people's heads. So if you've ever felt frustrated, like you're too old to have acne, just know that you're not alone and there's nothing unusual about what you're experiencing. So the big question is, is adult acne actually becoming more common or are we just somehow noticing it more? The answer is probably both. Research suggests that adult acne in women is actually very common with some data suggesting a true increasing incidence over time. Meaning, yeah, more people seem to have acne these days. But there are also a few reasons why it might just seem like there is more acne in adults. Number one, we talk about skin more openly now, which overall is a really good thing, but it just makes us more aware and maybe we're more likely to just see that people now have acne because we know so much about it and we're hearing about it. Social media puts a lot of stuff in our face around the clock. And nowadays, a lot more people are actively seeking treatment instead of just suffering in silence. More people seeking treatment means more people will get a diagnosis of acne. More people receiving a diagnosis of acne doesn't mean that acne in general is increasing or increasing in incidence in adults particularly just means that more diagnoses are happening. That being said, access to dermatologists hasn't substantially improved in comparison to years in the past. And a lot of the data on incidences do come from surveys. So it's actually hard to know, does the person actually have acne or just think they have acne? Remember, there are a lot of skin conditions that mimic acne like rosacea, perioral dermatitis, and certain diseases of the hair follicle. One thing is for certain, our modern lifestyle simply looks a lot different than it did in the past. We're dealing with what a lot of sources refer to as increasing stress. I don't know about you guys, but it seems as though we're faced with this paradox these days where life has arguably gotten a lot easier. There are so many advances, new technologies that are supposed to make our lives tremendously easy, while at the same time, it feels like life now more than ever is very, very stressful, very difficult to manage. Without a doubt, different diet dietary patterns have emerged, become more predominant, namely over-reliance on processed, ultra-processed, I should say, refined, pre-packaged, ready-made foods, as opposed to more nutritious, simple, balanced meals that are prepared at home. So many more people today than ever before live with obesity. There's a lot more environmental pollution, and we use a lot more skincare products than we did in the past. All these things can definitely influence acne, and we're going to break down how. Let's 
let's start with hormones. This is actually one of the biggest contributors to adult acne in women. Hormones, especially androgens, stimulate oil production from the sebaceous gland attached to the follicle, aka the pore. Here's the thing, even if you get your labs checked and your hormones on laboratory work are completely normal, like there's not an identifiable problem, that doesn't still mean that hormones aren't the main cause of your acne because you can have sensitivity to hormones that are at normal levels in your skin. Your skin can just be a lot more sensitive to hormone levels, which for you might be normal hormone levels. Even if your hormone levels are technically normal, your skin can be a lot more reactive to those hormones. Meaning this is a skin problem with the hormones versus a hormone problem causing skin issues. Of course, women experience a lot of hormonal fluctuations throughout their lifetime. The menstrual cycle, pregnancy, breastfeeding, hormonal contraceptives, starting and stopping, oral contraceptive pills, perimenopause, menopause. All of these shifts in hormones can trigger acne. Many women notice acne breakouts right before their period. Acne can flare anytime you start or stop a new form of oral hormonal contraceptive. For a lot of women, it's these hormonal changes that can lead to new acne appearing for the first time in your 30s, 40s, and beyond. The hormone insulin-like growth factor is another big driver. It leads to increased inflammation and increased sebum production. The important takeaway here, the hormonal driver of acne doesn't disappear once you become an adult. For many women, it just simply changes. Next, let's talk about diet because this is honestly one of the most debated topics in acne. After years and years of insisting that chocolate was something that caused acne, we slipped into this period where we were just telling people diet has nothing to do with acne based on the available science we had at the time. But somewhat newer research suggests that certain patterns of eating can actually be contributory to acne. Specifically, foods with a high glycemic load, meaning foods that spike your blood sugar, these tremendously increase insulin and insulin-like growth factor one, which can lead to more oil production and increase inflammation and, you guessed it, acne breakouts. We're not talking about the sugars in fruit here. We are talking about fruit juices, which lack fiber, processed, refined, sugary sweets, packaged pastries, white bread, and all of those sugary beverages. There's also some evidence to suggest an association with the consumption of skim milk and acne. And I have a whole video talking about these dietary associations in more detail. It doesn't mean that everyone needs to eliminate these foods in order to clear their skin or that eliminating these foods will do anything to change the trajectory of one's acne for that matter. But it does mean that it could be a contributing factor. One thing about life 30 plus years ago, there was no Starbucks, there was no Dutch Brothers, there was no crumble cookie, there was no walking around with these giant 30 plus ounce tubs of sugar and cream that people suck on seemingly around the clock now. Well, some people do. In general, snacking was just not really the norm. Sure, we had snacks when I was growing up. Adults at the time, I don't recall heavily snacking unless maybe they work like a night shift in a hospital. They needed a snack due to irregular meal times, but it just was not as commonplace, as widespread as it seems to be these days. A lot of children, for example, are given snacks round the clock, it seems, both at school and at home. And we're not talking healthy foods here. We're talking packaged junk. <laughs> seems like they're just getting a steady stream of snacks all throughout the day. Not just kids, but a lot of adults are snacking a lot these days. I think some of it got a lot worse during the pandemic as well, when people were just staying inside and the normal windows of eating were blurred. People working from home with easy access to their pantry maybe just started getting in the habit of snacking. We do not move as much as we did in the past. There's no reason to be eating around the clock like this. Not to mention eating all of these processed refined sugary snacks takes away our appetite for real nutritious meals. And so we're less likely to properly be fueling our bodies. A balanced diet with whole foods, healthy fats, fruits and vegetables with fiber to fuel the gut microbiome can help cut down on inflammation in the skin and definitely help support clearing the acne overall. But I want to emphasize this. It's the overall pattern of eating that I think is becoming a problem for a lot of people and really driving some of the shifts that we're seeing in increasing prevalence of adult acne in women. Stress is another factor that honestly gets underestimated. Skin problems in general are not helped by stress. When we're stressed out, our bodies are producing stress hormones like cortisol, which can impact oil production, inflammation, and slow down healing. And I think it's really chronic stress over time that is a big driver here. But without a doubt, I think we have so many more distractions, obligations. We're juggling so many things these days that the day-to-day -day is packed with a lot of little stressors, not to mention financial pressures. A lot of this fuels poor sleep, maybe some of
of our habits around social media are keeping us up at night creates a vicious cycle. Not only does that worsen the acne, but then the acne is stressful to cope with as well. And the whole thing kind of repeats itself. Stress management though, is not gonna cure anyone's acne, but improving sleep and managing stress overall is good for your health and bodes well for the health of your skin. Let's talk obesity because this, I believe is a really big driver. Without a doubt, we are heavier now than we have ever been as a population. No, it's not just an American problem. It is a problem all around the world. Although in the past couple of years, those numbers are starting to look a little bit better, likely due to a few things. A, we're not staying home all the time as it related to the pandemic. Also, without a doubt, the rise in popularity of GLP-1 receptor agonist medications like Ozempic and Wagovi are contributing to a now downturn in the obesity numbers. But excess adipose tissue is inflammatory and obesity is strongly, strongly associated with acne. With obesity, you have increased amounts of androgens and insulin-like growth factor, which drive inflammation, sebum production, and pore clogging, leading to more stubborn acne. Childhood obesity is now a really, really, really serious and widespread issue. This simply was not the case 30 plus years ago. Diseases that I was taught in medical school were largely diseases of adults, type 2 diabetes, alcoholic fatty liver disease, acanthosis nigricans, a skin problem associated with these things, we are now seeing in children at alarming rates. But this video is about the increase in acne in adults. So what does childhood obesity have to do with that? It boils down to the fact that people are spending a longer proportion of their lives with excess body fat, with obesity. Obesity is no longer a health problem that is encountered for the first time as an adult in most people. It has increasingly become a problem that spans multiple developmental stages, such as puberty. Without a doubt, those excess hormones at these key developmental milestones certainly play a role in fueling the grounds for stubborn acne into the adult years, all the way at the level of the poor. Now, another factor that does not get enough press time is actually pollution. There are studies showing that cities that have more pollution, people's acne tends to be a lot more stubborn in those areas. Air pollution leads to increased oxidative stress in the skin that drives more inflammation. It also contributes to poor clogging. Urban living, traffic, and particulate matter pollution definitely can have negative effects on the skin and on overall skin inflammation, as well as the oxidation of sebum leading to, well, more inflammation in the skin. On top of that, people are using more skincare products. They're putting more stuff on their face than ever before. Gone are the days, I think, when people would step up and be like, yeah, I use a bar soap on my face and that's it. Sure, you'll find those individuals, but they are increasingly becoming few and far between with the majority of people, myself included, and hey, I'm responsible for it because I talk about how skincare can benefit the skin, but people are using a ton of stuff now, without a doubt. There's always this rhetoric with regards to skincare products and acne that skincare products can clog pores, but the science doesn't really support that. We don't have solid research actually proving that that happens. Knowing what we know about acne pathogenesis, it doesn't even make sense that a skincare product would clog the pores, unless you're a rabbit ear. And even then, it doesn't seem clear that skincare ingredients clog pores. But what certainly can happen is that skincare products using multiple products, especially if those products have different ingredients that might alter bacteria and microflora, can over time influence the constitution of our microbiome in the skin, which definitely, definitely can play a role in acne. It's not a major underlying pathophysiologic mechanism, but it overlays a situation on the skin that could lead to more inflammation, more problems with the barrier and stubborn breakouts. It's also important to acknowledge the role for genetics, of course. If acne runs in your family, you probably are at increased risk of having an acne even as an adult. Then there's certain medical conditions like polycystic ovary syndrome, where there is an association with acne secondary to a state of hyperandrogenism. But having adult acne as a woman does not mean that you have PCOS. In fact, most women with PCOS who have acne, that's not the only thing that they have going on. They have oftentimes other dermatologic manifestations of PCOS, such as hirsutism, androgenetic alopecia, acanthosis nigricans. They have irregular menstrual periods and struggle with infertility. So simply having acne as an adult doesn't mean you have a 
hormonal disorder, doesn't mean you have hormone problems that need balancing, and it doesn't mean you have PCOS. Acne in adult women, it's multifactorial with multiple contributors. Hormones, diet, stress, genetics, obesity, pollution, skincare products, and our overall environment. Acne is not a personal failure. It's not a hygiene issue. While certain medical conditions can be associated with acne, having acne does not mean you are an unhealthy person. And the good news is that adult acne is very treatable, especially with an individualized approach such as what a dermatologist can offer you. All right, guys, I hope this video helps shed some light on why it seems as though acne is increasing in adult women, and we see a lot more women struggling with stubborn acne now than seemingly ever before. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and please leave a comment below. Do you deal with acne breakouts as an adult? If so, is this something that you have dealt with your whole life, or is this a new thing, or is it rearing its head again after years and years and years of what you felt like was a time where you were out of the woods? Um, check out some of my other acne videos here if you want specific recommendations on acne skincare, if you want to learn more about acne treatments like spironolactone, when Levy, adapalene, tretinoin, tazeratine, triferritine. We have a lot of videos here all about acne. So check those out. They're in a acne playlist where this video will land itself as well. If you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.